Hello everybody, welcome one more time to Bites and History and today we are again in the Culinary Arts Institute in Varna with Chef Hugo. How are you Chef? Hey, how are you doing? Good? Fantastic. Excellent guys, welcome back with us. Uh, thank you for the comments last week and the previous week, amazing. It's always great to hear what you have to say, what you write to us. I read them all and I'm really thankful for this. So is Daniel, right? Yes sir. Excellent. Um, summer season is coming in, so we're doing grilled meats. Kifteta and then uh, kebab. 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 It's a uh, minced meat preparation. So we have beef, we have ground pork. It can be different kinds of meat, but it have two measures of pork for one measure of the other meat, whether it's beef or veal, okay? So in here we have the ground pork. We have 500 grams. Daniel, you go with this. All right. Okay. We just put everything there, no? Yeah. Here we have the beef. So if we have two for one, so it's two measures of pork, 500 grams. We have 250 of beef after this. The spices we need to have for this, we need pepper. This is freshly cracked pepper. It's important to use this, not the commercial one, because the commercial one already cracked will lose the flavor after a point. So I will show you while the meat is cooking a pro tip on to get this pepper here in this format over here. Daniel has mixed the beef and the pork together, okay? I'm mixing it with my hand. Yeah, that's fine. Make sure you clean your hands and everything. I wash We're gonna uh, mince an onion because the big difference, the cuffetta is the round disc one. It's like a ball which you flatten slightly, okay? The cuffetta, the cuffetta has onions in it. That's mm -hmm. the main difference. Also, I have some onions over here and we're just gonna mince it really fine. Careful, Hugo. Yeah, you don't want to cut your finger. You want to have it really fine, otherwise it's going to be a big piece of onion and nobody likes this, okay? Wow. So my onion goes inside the meat over here. And we continue mixing here. Yeah. You want to avoid over mixing the meat. And now I have also, to thicken out the mixture, we have sliced bread over here, which we removed the crust. We're going to make some small cubes with this. It will make something called panade, P-A-N-A-D. That's a French technique uh -huh. that it's used all around the world. And the idea is that we'll thicken out our mixture. You can use water, you can use milk. And in this case, I have, I have water here. You could use milk if you want also. That's not a problem. It's basically you want to make a wet paste out of this. Okay. So you wet it up like this. Okay. And, and here, this amount, how many cubes are we gonna make? Uh, we we'll make about two or three out of it. Depends. You can have, you get smaller ones. You can make big ones. Uh -huh. It's up to you how you wanna have it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have. So see, this is this is like this. It's wet. Okay. You're gonna squeeze out the excess. All right. Okay. So it's wet. Uh -huh. So the excess is what's a paste basically. You make a like a sponge. Okay. Like a sponge. And you're gonna and add this to, to our mix. To this here. You could use milk if you want, you can use uh, water. In my case, I use water. I have water and vinegar, which I'm gonna mix one and one together, okay? Now, so, ideally- So what is the water and vinegar? This is to allow you to shape the uh, cuffetta uh, ah, in a really, yeah. In a nice, because if you go with your hands like this, yes. when you shape it, what happens is that it's gonna stick to your hands. Yes, that's right. always, always happened like that. So by doing like this, you go like this, right? and you grab it. This is the real pro tip, man. This is the real pro tip. Is the, real pro tip. Is, is the vinegar, what is the, the vinegar is gonna make? This that is apple food? vinegar, basically. Apple vinegar, yeah. okay. That could be any vinegar. Yeah. So I made some yesterday, also. Uh, we, you have to season it, salt and pepper. All right, let's mix this, salt, okay. All right. And now I have some here that I made yesterday because it got more flavor. All right, a bit of cracked pepper in it. Now, the important part when you do this is that because it's ground meat, all right? And if you like, you've done burgers before or something, when you make it, it is coarse, it is not smooth. And you want to have a creamy, silky texture. So the important part is that you have to work your dough with cold hands. You have to work your mixture with cold hands. I'm going to add a little bit of water so it's not too dense to dry okay so you have it so it stays yeah. creamy okay that makes a big difference okay? Okay. all right what about this shape 
What this do you think good. about it? But it's too flat already. What uh -huh. you're gonna do instead is you're gonna do this. Look, you make a ball, okay? Like literally a ball, a round ball, okay? Like this. Okay, I'm okay. following you. Make it compact, and then you slightly flatten it. Slightly. Okay. Let me see yours. All right, all okay. right. That's what you want to have. I have a grill here, which is warm already. We warmed up earlier. Okay, we're gonna make all our balls like this. First, we make the balls, and after yeah. we put them all together one time in the in the pan. That's yeah. the, that is the idea. Yeah. All right. So we have this. Are ready. Next time is to go to the grill. Daniel, you have some oil on your right over here. You're gonna give it to me. Yes, sir. All right. Here's the oil. So our grill is warm. Okay. Um, the good thing with cast iron is it retains the heat a lot. You don't need a lot of oil on it. So a little bit of oil goes a long way. On the of this in my home should be at the highest temperature. No. Highest in here is 10, so I'm at 4. You start at 5, so it's a high heat, lower a bit, but if it's too high, it's gonna burn on the outside before it can cook through. Okay? Thank you. And you hear that noise? Yes, sir. That's right. what you wanna hear. Now, the thing is, you don't move them also. Let them go. Many people are gonna move them around. That's my style. Don't, because when you move them, when you put it here, it's loaded. We loaded the, yes. the pan over here. So it was warm, and we put it down, so it's colder. So if I move it, it stays cold. So the, the pan will get colder and colder and colder and colder. So the meat will boil at the end, it won't be nice. Okay. It won't be cooked the way it should be, okay? Yes. How long we should give it each side? Seven days. <laughs> no, it's about, this will take about four or five minutes to cook. Okay. okay. We just turn it one. Well, if you were if you were the classic French cuisine where we just take it and then we lift it 90 degrees to have the hash mark on it, okay, and then you flip it. That's what you teach you in classic cuisine. So you have the grill mark on it. When you buy pepper at the store, it's old. You never know how fresh it was. Yes. So you can have a grinder like we have here. This is fine. You can have this. You can adjust if you want. You can adjust to have fresh pepper for the table that's one thing all right but you want to have I like to have like this like a bigger texture a bigger grain on it for sauce for example or for me for, yeah. for, 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 for grilled meat it's perfect so to make it basically you need a rack you need a towel a kitchen towel you need your fresh peppercorn over here okay that's a mix of green peppercorn white pepper pink pepper black pepper in it okay so you put it here and this you get it just from the supermarket. Yeah, it's, it's nothing really special with it's, that. It's a package. It's a, it's a two ounces, thirty grams. Uh, it's called mignonette. I write down the word afterwards. It's okay. uh, it's a, again it's mise en place. It's a basic prep that you would do in the kitchen. It wasn't mignonette, French. Mignonette that is French. Yeah, or... mignonette. Yeah, it's freshly cracked black pepper or white pepper, whichever you want to use. When I was in France uh, many years ago, uh, as a, the, the, the the mise en place, the prep for all the stations, you would come in, you would do cube butter, minced shallot, and you, you would do mignonette like this, and you would do the stocks uh -huh. fresh every day also. Okay. Better this than peeled potatoes, you know? Uh, I did that also. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. I did that also. But the trick with this is that you end up with a nicely fresh cracked pepper. Nice. And if you smell this... Yeah, it smells very good. I really wish we had smell of vision You can have a camera, they should invent this. Camera that lets you smell what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's fresh. And you do this? Yeah, if they can smell the kefir, they will oh, also no, really enjoy it, you know? That's definitely it's such a nice smell now. So, yes, you can buy it already done. That's one thing for sure. But if you do buy it already done, then you won't have the same flavor. And this smell is absolutely yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can feel the smell from here. The smell okay. is absolutely amazing, amazing. All right, nothing like fresh pepper. Let's go back on our grill over here. These you can buy the grill at many, many stores. I won't name where I bought it, but it's a big M company here in, in Radna. 
Don't name it, they are not uh, sponsors. Well, we work with them. They're really good and with you, us. You work with them. You work with everybody who goes here at a Culinary Arts Institute. Tell me a little bit what, what are the products going on at the moment. Uh, right now we have uh, the contest for our brand new for our future students where you at home you this is a bit too much we're going to use that one the high is too high lower the heat you cook it you film it you share it yes sir. so that's one thing i want to do with our future students so you're at home you like cooking at home you're stuck at home so what you can do is you cook your favorite recipe your favorite food and you send it to us okay and then uh the good thing is that you can wear you can win a scholarship up to 1,000 euro, which is nice for this. Exactly. And I also want to say to everybody here that the other day I ordered from your delivery oh, thank from, you. the, from the university, from the Culinary Arts Institute, was some chicken and with some Thai rice. Yeah, we made a special rice with Daniel. Because <laughs> he yeah. likes spicy food and we have a rice with vegetables, so we just pimped it out just for him, custom made. Yeah, it was amazing. My family loved it. Yeah. My family loved it. Chicken, the pork, was was great. Um, we definitely order it again. Definitely. We have a menu which changes mostly every week, every uh -huh. Monday. So at this point, I'm gonna lower the heat a bit because I don't want it to burn. You can it doesn't burn, and you want it to stay moist. That, that's the main important part over here. Okay. I, this don't look like the commercial ones, you know? Yeah. But I think that is good that they don't look like that. The commercial one, the main problem is that they use chemical agents and flavoring agents. Uh -huh. And then, so they use a, a chemical salt that keeps the meat pink in. And they all taste the same. They yeah. all, all taste the same. Okay. So because we have, it's mostly pork in this case, two, th two versions of pork for one of beef, the meat will be whiter than redder, for sure, for this. Uh, and a bit juicier also, you can see that it's not too, it's not too dry, okay? That's important. That's <laughs> I, can, important. I can see from here that it's looking good. That's the important part. No, it tastes good. Though. It tastes good. Alright, so while this cooks... Um, let me teach you. Oh yeah, we have a surprise. Daniel is teaching you how to cook something today, guys. So let's take a short commercial break. There's a commercial button. We're resetting and we'll be right up with you guys. Uh, we are preparing today. Pebre. Pebre is a sauce that we use when we have barbecue back in Chile. It's a kind, a little bit spicy sauce and a little bit hot, like chili. And for this we're gonna need coriander, we're gonna need tomatoes, garlic, uh, chili pepper, onion, and oregano. A little bit of uh, lemon juice, oil, and a bit of vinegar. So it's a salsa cruda, it's not a cooked sauce. It's it's like the Mexican pico de gallo. Yes, sir. Okay. It's very similar to the Mexican pico de gallo. This is like a Latin sauce. We are big fans of coriander. I, it's my favorite herb. I like to use it pretty much on everything. And normally we also will sprinkle over soups, you know? You know, people will say they don't like coriander because it's a part of the culture. Like in Bulgaria, if you get good coriander, it's kind of hard sometimes. Yes. Because it's something that they have in the culture daily, unfortunately. They have many great food, many great herbs, but they don't have coriander in itself. So you have some sometimes, but not always. Now, we want to chop some tomatoes. I'm going to try to don't cut myself. That would be nice. Yeah, because I'm going to... And we're gonna chop it fine in small cubes. You should use two or three tomatoes. Just about one tomato per person. Exactly. Okay. And this is something that is not a garnish, it's just a sauce. You dip your bread on, the, on that, you put it on top of the meat, and that's the way we consume it back home. This is normal, something that you will have with your family, let's say, uh, in a weekend, during the weekend, mm -hmm. if you do a barbecue, this is a must have for the barbecue. Okay. You know? Cutting this, I have to chop it finer. What about the cubes? They're out. They're out of the uh, of the pan. Of 
the, uh, the right. to come out. Let him rest for a few minutes before. All right. Yeah, we learned that the other day. Because if you don't, then it gets too dry. Uh, I have. Uh, I work with Bulgarian chef. Uh, if it's not right, it's my fault. It's not. It's not them. And if it's good, it's them. And who's else. our advisor? Tell me, who's uh, our advisor? I have Chef Polian giving me all a right. here. Um, yes. He always double checks all my recipes. So uh, on paper it looks good, but if it's bad, it's my <laughs> fault, not him. So far, nothing is bad. Everything that I've tried here with you, I mean, very tasty. Okay. So we have some garlic also. Yes, we are generous with the garlic. We put maybe for this amount of sauce, uh, three, four cloves of, of garlic. garlic. Okay. Yes. And All right, garlic goes in. We're gonna add the onion. It's about. This is half an onion. All right, we're gonna put the chili. I think chili today we're gonna go. I'm Chilean, this is chili. Oh, yeah, yeah. We chili. go all, all the way with the chili peppers, you know. Can I put that one in? Yes, all you need this. All right, so this goes in. So you left the seeds in it, the shell of the, of the pepper, and there's a white membrane. Uh, if you can stop two seconds, I will show you from this here. Okay, you know, uh, in the slice over here, if you zoom on me here. The, the the spiciness of it is the white part here. That's where the, the that's where from the the membrane to the inside. It's the vein. If we remove it, then it's not gonna be that that spicy. It won't be that spicy. It's gonna be spicy. But and, and, be and look, this is the the, the, the cut that we're looking into the the chili. We don't want it that fine. Just chop it. Just chop okay. it to be crunchy when you bite it. You know. Right, this. Now we will add uh, oregano. Oregano in it. Yes. We're gonna be generous as well with this. Oregano is your friend. It sounds good. I love oregano. Lemon juice, not lime, but lemon. Lemon juice, yes, lemon juice. We don't have limes in Chile. This is more like oil, right. which is also your friend. Yeah, oil is good for you. A bit of vinegar, and I'll get the salt thing. Yes, sir. And pepper. And pepper. You fresh pepper. pepper. You wanna use your... your... The, the, the fresh one that we made today. Yes, sir. Okay. Put some... Salt on it. And this. Okay. All right. More or less what we are looking for. I'm going to wait a taste. Another tip I'll give you right now. Right. In the kitchen, most people they go either with their hands, like this, which is disgusting, or they go with a spoon in it. Yes. And they use the same spoon over and over and over. And that's bad. But the trick is to do a two spoon technique. So you grab one spoon which will touch the food, this one here. Okay, and they didn't touch, and that one goes to my mouth. Mm. Guys, it's good. It's good. Perfect. All right, guys. So now we're doing the uh, the kebab chip. The kifteta is the round one, which is earlier. This one here, and then the kebab chip is the cylindrical one, like a, like a tube. Yes, sir. Have. Now the main difference with this one, this one has more beef or more veal than pork. It's two for one. Okay. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Okay. What we have here, here we go. Go with the pork first. All right. Okay. Then you're gonna go with the beef. All right. Okay. In this case, it's veal and beef together. I have the cracked pepper, which we did earlier. Okay. I start mixing it. Yeah, you start mixing. Okay. Go with, with the hands. Hand. Yeah, with the hand if you want. Make sure your hands are clean. No worries. You wash them by side. Okay. And we have toasted cumin seeds over here, so you have more flavor. You could use ground cumin if you want. Yes. But then again, like I said, you never know how long it's been ground, so you use all the flavors. So I use fresh one, which we toasted, and it goes How do you toast it? In a pan, just put it in a pan and dry toast it, that's it. No uh -huh. oil, nothing. How, how long? Uh, a few minutes, it starts to smell. It's gonna warm, you're gonna smell it right away, then it's good. What else? Pinch of salt. There is other seeds that are that I can toast, I, I, I see that Most of the dry seeds, most of the dry spices can be toasted to have more flavor, always. And now the uh -huh. main difference we're gonna put also is a bit of soda water in it. Okay. Soda water? Yeah. And you have to work this. This yeah, is it's a, a texture you have to work together okay, for about 10 minutes. Okay. And I'm gonna add more as I go with it. More soda? More soda, a little bit more soda, okay. And that is the, the function of the soda? 
It gives you a creamy texture. You're doing an emulsion, basically, because uh -huh. the pork has fat in it, the meat has, the, the, the beef and the veal have less fat in it. Mm -hmm. So you want to bind everything together. This is very traditional, not just from Bulgaria, it's from the whole bank. Balkan the whole bank is, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Okay, keep working it. But this is a lot of soda, already. You can see that it's a soft, creamy texture. That's what you want to have. You want to have this. Mm -hmm. How are we going to do this into a shape? I okay. have no idea. Okay. So we add, the, again, the mixture of water and vinegar. It's important, okay? This time we're going to add a drop of oil in it. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So go like this, okay? You grab some over here, okay? Like this. In the same way, you would make like a ball. A ball, okay. You do your ball. Yes. Okay. And then once you have it, passing between hand to hand. No, and you at this point, look, it just I'm I'm letting it fall and I'm lifting. Uh-huh. Like this, okay? And it goes here, okay? And this is like the real deal. It's rounder. You oil your grill, a little bit more oil this time. And you gotta make sure your grill is hot. Okay. Well, you can make a few, you can make them a few in front, but when you go and when you take it, you just yeah, run this. Last, at the last minute. Yeah. Okay. And then you roll it, and then you gotta roll it. Like this. Okay. Well, how many restaurants have you worked in your, in your book lab? Do you have any idea, more or less? I've counted, I've moved apartments 31 times in my life. All right. Uh, I've worked in 18 different countries as a chef. Okay. And I'm not done. I'm going to keep on traveling the world. There's too many things to see in the world at this time. Yes. Well, it's kind of hard to travel now, but... It will get better. Yeah, it'll get better. How many restaurants? More or less, you know? How many restaurants? I would say about 25 to 30. Okay. From from long from long periods to short periods, but yeah. about 25 to 30. And which one is the one that impressed you the most? They're all good, man. They're all good. They're all they're all great restaurants. Some place I hated more than others. Okay. Um, France was awesome. It was difficult. It's it's demanding. A lot of work mentally and physically. Uh huh. Uh, Montreal was awesome. Great food in Montreal. People should go visit Montreal. They have a chance. That is your home city. Yeah. Well, I studied there. Okay. I love Mexico. It was nice. Great food. How many years did you spend in Mexico? Uh, nine years in Mexico. All right. All the time like that until they get some kind of shape? Yeah, that one is almost ready to be shaped. Because this looks like it's going to be tasty. This is going to be soft and moist. And to yeah. serve with this, we have rutanitsa, which is a sauce. It's a typical Bulgarian sauce that you have mostly in autumn. Yes. Uh, because then they roast the peppers, they roast the tomatoes. Uh, we, we made some. It won't be as good as you would have it in autumn because, you know, right now we have spring summer tomatoes. Yeah, uh, we should we should teach the people to do this. We'll make it. We'll make it. We should make a video about lutenitsa. What do you think, guys? Would you like to see a video about lutenitsa? You know, I love it. Actually, in your comments, guys, which we read all the time and what we appreciate, send us or tell us what you think. Yes, and also tell us what kind of recipes you'd like to do. Also, we're back. Yeah. Everything is finishing grilling. We're gonna start putting on what we have today. So in this case. Now this is simple food. We're gonna make it a bit fancy now. We're gonna make some of the food inside here. Okay. We are in the culinary arts institute. Let's we'll try and plate something. Be a bit fancy here. Okay. Let's try and plate something. Something that I don't really, to be honest, I haven't thought about it. It doesn't really. We're plate. experimenting. Yeah. This here. Okay. So now we're gonna have. This can get a nice one, make a nice portion, okay? That's like a portion for me. 
No, no es por Mopibu. And then fix it with the spoon. But use your sauce, the one you made earlier. Yes, sir. This is something that I got fresh this morning just for me. My friend. Okay. We have a friend, I will send, I'll put the link uh, who does this. He does many, many fresh herbs for us. And this is fresh chubita. Fresh chubita. But it's a mountain one from a Balkan mountain nearby. It was. Can I take one? Yeah, yeah, taste it. It is absolutely, the taste is absolutely amazing. Mmm. Yeah. Totally different, totally different than what you have. And we're gonna decorate it. It is slightly spicy, which is nice also. Yeah, it's not the same taste that the dry one. No. It's, it's, it's even better. It's a Let world world of difference. Let me have a look on the. I leave you there. We'll have a look on the dish. It's over here. <laughs> so it is spicy and it has a nice bite to it. So it's really nice. I really like it. Okay. So this here and we have with this classic Bulgarian bread. Yes, sir. Which is the best thing in the world. Simple, guys. It's simple food. It's not. We made it fancy in a plate now, but it's the simplest food is the best one. And also with this normally, you could also have a salad with just grated cabbage. With we hope you enjoy this episode of Bites and History. We want to thank Chef Hugo, Culinary Arts Institute Varna, and Foreigner BG. Thank you for being with us. Like and share if you like it. And see you next week.